Hello everybody, this is Wingflyer, and here we are casting yet another game of Escalation. Guys, I promised you Escalation. I am bringing you Escalation, and uh, I don't want to hear any complaints. Uh, the truth is, I've been meaning to cast this game for a few weeks, and uh, I'm glad I'm finally getting to it. I don't know um, much about how this game goes. I do know it's supposed to be pretty entertaining. It is a 4v4 on a map called Once Upon a Time. So I've never actually cast on this map before. But I do know it is designed for these big um, monstrous team uh, game type engagements. And I'm very excited about that because I assume it's going to be pretty fun. Um, but I've got with me today a very special guest, uh, Krogarth, uh, who has his own YouTube channel. He casts uh, pro, mostly pro TA games, and I'm very happy to introduce him to the uh, to the channel and to you guys. Uh, and it is so great to have a co-caster. So, uh, Krogarth, could you go ahead and introduce yourself to the stream? Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Krogarth. I'm glad to be here with uh, Wingflyer today. Like he said, I've been casting pro TA for just a couple months now, and mostly. Like uh, Protea specifically, uh, I do. I have played Escalation. I know a bit about Escalation, and I'm planning on uh, dabbling in the other TA mods. But oh uh, yeah, I'm just excited to talk about this. Okay, man. Well, we're uh, we're uh, happy to have you. It is so nice to have a co-caster, so that I can uh, sometimes give my poor voice a break uh, in these long games. And I am assuming this game will probably be pretty long and I, I've also heard it's going to be pretty entertaining so let's go ahead and introduce the players here at the bottom right we have Loli uh, the uh, yellow core commander in purple we have Smurf the uh, core commander in dark blue we have Bully in pink we have Leroy and that will be the southern team or team two uh, and at the top left, we have Outcast and Red, the Arm Commander. We have Corex Albatross, um, who I think that this might be Novaya. I heard Novaya is always changing his name, but I've heard that if they has Corex, that's generally Novaya. So we might just assume that's who it is, the, the brown core commander. Uh, here in orange, we have Fido and... Uh, in dark green we have shockwave so i don't really know a lot of these players but um if they're using game ranger they're probably smurfing like crazy so any of these guys could almost be anybody um you know don't don't take their names that seriously and um yeah again i've never cast on this map so i'm not really sure what to expect but um yeah l let me ask you krogarth what do you think i mean what do you what do you expect from this map what what are your uh, predictions about uh, where this game is going to go? Uh, based on the metal patches, like the start positions, it looks like this is probably going to be like a fast start, just because of the four metal, like the like the little I don't know what you call them, but the the squares, the blocks, the metal blocks where everybody starts, uh, where you can get four mexes that oh, are probably yeah. making like two point three each. That's a good point. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's a fairly long map, so you could probably go vehicle or K bot and be totally fine. But, yeah, I think it's just going to be a fast start. Probably going to be a lot of aggression in the middle. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming these hills, these two hills, are are uh, pretty resource rich. So, oh yeah, if you get, you know, if you get control of these hills, whichever team can take control of the hills, um, let's assume they're just going to have a uh, massive advantage. And so, I, you know. We can predict that both teams are going to fight for these. Um, oh, no, it looks, it looks like everybody can just walk up the hills, too. Yeah, it looks like even the vehicles okay. are going up the hills. So it's it's always a little bit hard to tell just from a glance uh, what the the terrain is like. But uh, already we have Outcast in red sending down some peewees. And uh, we also have Pink sending up... Just a couple little Jeffies, and uh, but you know I don't I don't really expect these to get too much done. Uh, this early game harassment in a four v four. It's uh you know it's 
it's a little bit difficult to get anything accomplished because just having that many players you, you know what I'm saying it's it's much different than a 1v1 where right. early game harassment can just end the game and then and then you win and then that's it <laughs> so um yeah personally when I play these big 4v4s I don't even bother harassing most of the time because it just feels like I'm never going to get much accomplished but uh Yellow might make me eat my words, gets that geothermal uh, geothermal down to like one oh, freaking my. hit. That's freaking He almost crazy. got it. Yeah. Yellow. See, that would have been good harassment right there. <laughs> yeah. That would have been a nice pickup if he had gotten that, because that would have been... Not only would he have taken out this geothermal, it would have exploded and taken out all these metal makers. Yeah, that would have been really good. But, uh, yeah, ultimately he doesn't. Doesn't get too much done. Again, it is hard to harass in 4v4 because you have all your allies to help you. And even if you get harassed, you know, you have three other players that are going to protect you. So. Yeah, there's not a clear flank. Exactly. It's, uh, it's not, not, a, not a great place to... Uh, not a great way to just end the game. Although it looks like Red's trying his best. <laughs> yeah, he does take out a con, and that's something, right? But, um, yeah, one thing I will say about these these big team games is you, you really have to have a, a strategy to, to, to uh, win the game or end the game, you know what I mean? Like... You need your team needs to work together to come come up with something to actually kill your opponents. Because uh, one thing about Total Annihilation that's interesting is that, which is which is unlike other RTSs, is like if you have a failed attack, not only do you waste your your resources, but you give them a bunch of metal corpses, and then they can just pick those up, and uh, that can be pretty devastating because then you just gave the enemy team a massive like resource advantage. Um, the only exception to that is uh, air. What'd you say? Uh, the only exception to giving your opponent's resources when you are aggressive is if you go air. That's uh, true. You can just bomb a bunch of them. Hope we see somebody go air at some point and do some bombing. Yeah, we will. I'm sure we will. Um, but a lot of deep gunning. Yeah, a lot of degunning. Yellow moving in here with a big group of levelers there. <laughs> but ultimately, you know, he's just kind of sending an assembly line of yeah. units. And that's not really the most efficient way to... <laughs> you don't generally just want to send an, a line of units one at a time. Because then you're just feeding your opponent metal. And uh, you can kind of see that here. Yellow is just sending... He just sent a bunch of levelers one at a time up there. And, uh, you know, Orange really teching up quickly. And when I do... Uh, uh oh. Error detected. Alright, well. I don't know what that's about. Hopefully the replay keeps working. I have never... I have never actually seen that. But what yeah. I was saying is... The glitch? Uh, yeah, do you think it's... I mean, I hope so. I hope the game... I hope the replay keeps... Uh, keeps going, but I've never seen that, so I, I can't really can't really predict what's going to happen. There's some kind of structure here I've never seen. That might have been the error, but either way, it's it's gone now. So let's just cross our fingers that you know this is really old technology that the replayer. So. Yeah. Uh, big fight up here on the uh, on this plateau. Got and, some stumpies. Uh, yeah, a lot of stumpies. Some javelins and a lot of flashes as well coming in here. So uh, overall, pretty close. But what I was saying before that the replay bug happened was that uh, when I do team games, I like to tech up really quickly, just like Orange is doing. And he's already got a ton of Fidos, and of course, Fidos in Escalation have this volley fire. They they fire a massive volley of shells. It looks like something out of metal. What is it called? Metal Slug? Or, uh... You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, the, that 2D side-scroller game? 
Um, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, like the, it's, like the, the gun should shoot him up kind of Yeah, way. exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I know, that's I what, what it looks about. like. Yeah. It really <laughs> it looks like something like straight yeah. out of that. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Fido's are just disgusting in Escalation, and they, they kill groups of T1 units, no problem. And, uh, and and point defense pretty well, right? That's true, and defenses, because they they have a arc, so they can just um, they can hopefully just bypass dragon's teeth pretty well. So hopefully he doesn't walk right into that HLT right there though on the hill. But uh, yeah, orange really doing a really nice job already upgrading his his maxes to uh, T two. Uh, getting the mohos there. So Is I wanted to ask, uh, what what do the what do the Fidos do in um, Protea? In Protea, like how do they work? I don't I don't I don't know if I've seen them in that. Uh, they're they're for one they they don't their trajectory is straight, right? Okay. Uh, so the the fight if Fidos here you see they shoot up and it's kind of like over things they can shoot over dragon's teeth, but in uh, Protea and in OTA it's uh linear shot it it doesn't have much arc to it um but they do have pretty good range so really the, the only is the biggest issue with phytos is that you really have to kite well with them and if you don't micro them then they're going to get smashed and that's probably the same here if if units got up close with these phytos they probably wouldn't last that long yeah they, they seem to be pretty tanky yeah i mean phytos do need to be microed well to uh, for full effect but it is also a unit that you can just kind of spam because again with with all this volley of shells um, you know they, they do really well in mass yeah. I've actually heard discussions in the discord or people talking about fighters or OP um, you know I'm not sure they're OP, OP <laughs> but they are they are really strong right I mean it's it's hard to deal with them because I don't know. There's not a lot of units to outrange them. Even do on the, T2. So. Do the Dominators outrange? Yeah, the, the Dominators do outrange them. Okay. So, so that, that is a some. potential counter. But, you know, the Dominators would have to micro really well. Because if the Fighters get in range of the Dominators, they would just, you know, shred them. True. Because they probably are faster than the Dominators. They probably are, yeah. And they have more health for sure. Dominators are pretty squishy. Um. But, um, yeah, so it is an interesting unit because, like, it's hard. So let's say you just have, like, a group of, um, of Reapers. Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, theoretically, if the Reaper gets on top of them, you know, they can kill them. But if the fighters just kite the Reapers, you know, um, mm -hmm. then the Reapers just never get in range and it's frustrating. So, you know, and same thing, I guess even with like things like Goliaths or Bulldogs or so there are some units that outrange them like um like the penetrators or uh sharpshooters uh sumos probably would of course sumos are slow but um core yeah core wouldn't have a lot of units to outrange them that that might be the issue but either way I don't think they're OP but they are really strong as we can see here these dominators Blah. But, he uh, just he left them all at the rally there, so they're all taking all the damage. Yeah, them being so tightly packed is uh, no bueno. And uh, as we already discussed, they're pretty good against defenses as well. So um, I have to think that this gat is going to get deleted. Yeah, probably all three of them. Has uh. How many players are advanced now? Is everybody? Hopefully. Yeah, so let's go ahead and check the bases. Um, pink is on advanced K-Bot. Blue is also on advanced K-Bot. Oh, okay. Oh, T3. Uh, purple now going to T3. It's interesting. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like yellow has advanced yet. Yeah, but a big battle happening in mid. And let's go ahead and check out... It looks like Dark Green has... Oh, I can't find his plan. Oh, here it is. A lot of players going arm uh, T2K bot. I mean, it's like everyone decided they wanted to go 
arm T2K bought this game. Um, Brown has also advanced. And yeah, and Red has two. It looks like if we're uh, if we're looking at like the resources, the teams aren't too far off from each other either. So it's pretty even at the moment. Yeah. Yellow definitely needs to tech up relatively soon though if they want to keep up. <laughs> yeah, if they want. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It does look like he has. Oh, he has. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like all the players on T2. But uh, again, in these 4v4s, it's, it's really difficult to just break your opponent because uh, with all four players defending, you really need a, a team effort to, uh, to actually kill them. And uh, the Southern team, you know, they're doing quite a push. I mean, they've got blue and pink here. Uh, quite a few, let's see. A lot of Roccos, some Fidos, some Javelins, but... Uh, I did see a couple of Mavericks as well. Yeah, there were some Mavericks. Off. Yeah. But, um, unfortunately... Uh, yellow and, and purple don't seem to be helping. And that's the problem with these team games, man. Like, you can never get all of your whole team to push at once, you know. There's always a couple of players doing their own thing. It'd be kind of frustrating, but... Blue might actually get something done. I mean, if he keeps walking north, doesn't seem to be a lot in his way, and he might even be able to maybe get some economic damage. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty chased powerful. By spiders. Are spiders good or different in escalation? Well, how do they work in uh, in Protea? Well, it looks like the model shrunk, but in Protier, I'm, I'm trying to think if they've even changed. Uh, I think that the stun might be slightly less than it was because the stun was kind of really long. No OTA. And I can't remember. I don't know that they really made much of a change from OTA to Protier for this the spiders, but they're definitely smaller here. Yeah, so here, I mean, they're like you said, the model's smaller, but basically they... And they might be a little cheaper, but um, yeah, they're, they're pretty much exactly what you'd expect. They they paralyze uh, units or they EMP them, and uh, they're a really nice combination, um, especially with T3, uh, paralyzing groups of units. And um, I cast a game not that long ago where it was, uh, I think it was EXE and. Uh, remember who but anyway exe I built know what you're a, talking about yeah <laughs> he just built spiders that's all he did big swarm big yeah, swarm of spiders swarm spiders and that's and i was like okay exe's trolling but it actually worked pretty well like surprisingly and, I, uh, I don't know i just want to point out i don't know if you noticed but on the, the left side red did lose their advanced lab okay right there so, so that's um kinda, that sucks yeah it does suck the southern team is <laughs> you know getting some damage done you know they Sent Red back to the Dark Ages. That's uh, yeah, it's progress. Man. And uh, yeah, the Southern team, you know, they're they're doing some work, putting on the pressure. How's uh, Purple's Krogoth game? Oh yeah. Looking? Oh, that's he's only got one. Oh, it's gonna be a minute. One yeah. unit building it, so that, that that's might. not even a builder. That's a. Like a might? Is that what it's called? Yeah, so this is a... In Escalation, it's a T1K bot that is theoretically designed just for reclamation. So you usually build one or two at the beginning to just go around the map and reclaim all the, like, rocks. Um, but, it, yeah, it's really not designed for... I, I'm not even sure why he's got this, except it seems like he just wants to keep it there so he can kind of build it when he needs to, which maybe now he's going to transition. Yeah, it looks I would like think that it's probably the, like the slowest builder in the game. It probably is. It's it's not quick, but um, yeah, basically, um, other than purple, I don't know if anybody else. Let's check the bases. I don't know that anybody else is even attempting T three yet. They're not. They're not even going to be ready for it. Probably if if he does get it up like quickly. Yeah. 
But what what I will say is, uh, I personally, I personally think that the core T three K bot is the strongest T three. Maybe maybe the I think it's the best T three in the game because like they have access to um, Arbitrator, Juggernaut. I think it's what the Widows. Um, what what else what else comes from the scan tree? Like oh, I I do know that the, the Juggernauts are insane. Is the Talos? Uh, oh yeah, core? the Talos. Yeah. Just a lot of really solid options come out of this. I just think it's the best, like most well, most well rounded of all the T three uh, gantries, or and of even. Of course, you can't forget Krogoth. Yeah, the Kro yeah the Krogoth too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, so just disgusting options out of that thing. I mean, just the Arbitrator in particular is just game ending. I've won a lot of games with that. And, and that's just, the super long range. Just like spider artillery thing. It's like right? a nuke. Yeah, it, it just it shoots out basically a nuke that can't be countered because you can't. There's no, oh, okay. any nukes don't work on it. Right? Oh, I must have been thinking. What was I thinking? Oh, I was thinking of the Nova. Yeah, yeah you're t you're thinking of the uh, the arm one, um, which is more of a like a walking Bertha. Um, right. Which I've I've talked about in in many videos and I've actually uh, brought it up to Wotan many times. I, I think the Nova is just vastly inferior to the arbitrator because um, first of all the arbitrator it's vertically launched so it just lands on his target so any kind of blocking or dragon's teeth like forget it man it's gonna land on it and um, yeah I just think the arbitrator is disgusting but you know we, we don't see him too often uh, I guess it just depends on the game but it's certainly an, it's certainly a possibility but right now he's building a t3 construction K box which is Pretty, pretty normal. Got to get that eco up. Yeah, just getting his eco, getting his build power. Got another Fido push. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, normal. They do seem to like those Fidos. Yeah, they're pretty good in team games because you can just kind of spam them. And, uh, but Mortys, I guess, are kind of the the core equivalent to Fidos, so. Uh, yellow will have those, and uh, Mortys do outrange the Fidos, I think. But uh, Mortys, of course, only get the one one shell per volley. So I love Mortys. Yeah, they're, they're probably one one of my favorite units. Very powerful. Now uh, this is the first air we've seen this game. Oh, we got advanced air too. Yeah, dark green on advanced brawlers. And going for a, a arm T3 uh, gantry. So personally, would you say brawlers are going to be more effective than advanced bombers? Because um, I personally think advanced bombers would probably do more. Damage. I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, generally, like an escalation, the bombers are better for uh, those base assaults, like taking out core structures. Like uh, fusions and, and gantries or um, any kind of yeah you know those kind of bombing raiding runs and the brawlers yeah. are generally better at uh, defense um, they're better at killing units obviously they're a lot more sustainable but uh, yeah bombers in escalation are more or le more or less sent on suicide runs it's like they go in there to just kill kill priority targets and then die hey um, as long as they get their target the <laughs> yeah. It's usually worth it if they can if they can get their target. Uh, while you know while the gunships are more designed for um, like a long term, you know, they're, I think they're more effective if you can keep them alive. Um, kind of use them over a longer period of time, but um, yeah, we'll speed up the game here. Brown's got a lot of uh, a lot of construction aircraft. Probably a good way to go. So you can build anywhere quickly. But uh, yeah, the southern team seems to have taken the left plateau here. Oh, I might, I might even want to slow this down. This is. I don't know that those. What are those uh, artillery? Uh... Oh, these are pillagers? Or no. Oh, vandals. No, okay, no, these are those the T1. Are the, they're the T1 ones. Yeah, yeah these so are like T1. Not accurate at all. 
not very accurate and not really great in combat. I think they're more designed for uh, early game killing of, of emplacements and defenses. Yeah, he's just using them for the intimidation factor right now. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're not great in combat because their their shells are so slow. You can just walk out of the right out of the, the uh, line of fire. So. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, you know, blue and pink just on the Fido game plan. And red as well, everyone on the Fido game plan. Apparently, that's the, uh, the uh, you know, flavor of the week that, that we're doing. But the yellow here with a lot of Mortys, so... I don't know, this... You know, dark green does have a lot of defense, but, like, it's all kind of crappy defense, you know? Yeah, more, yeah, that's not shooting Mortys. Yeah, M Mortys are very good at, at killing the static defense, and uh, of course, Orange is bringing in a, uh, a squad of Fidos. Ooh, Mavericks. Yeah, those Mortys don't run. Yeah, those Mortys need to get out of there. Mortys are strong, but they're not. They don't have a ton of HP, so uh, they have to have to be micro. I think Pink kind of asking his, his teammates to help him. It's the uh, it's the ever present struggle of a four v four type game where <laughs> you're just trying to get your team to work with you, and it's it's really tough <laughs> sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were playing actually a bunch of four v four, five v five pro TA games last night, and yeah. so I I definitely can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> It really is. Uh, it really is the struggle just to get your team to uh, kind of work together and uh, not just sit there, either you know, sit in their base and play Sim City or um, or whatever. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell what they're doing. <laughs> You're just like, are you <laughs> are you trolling? You know? Yeah. After you've been playing like an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it does feel that way. Yeah, sometimes. But, oh, um, I got the, go the widow. Yeah, so the widow is. Uh, I think I, I've mentioned him in other casts, uh, or the arm equivalent of this. Uh, what was the arm equivalent of this called? Um, basically, it's a it's an early game T three unit, and um, they just shoot out a volley of of missiles, uh, but they're they're pretty fast, and they have a lot of health, so uh, if you can get enough of them, they're really good for kiting. Um, you can just kind of kite your opponent's armies, shoot out these volleys of missiles, and uh, they're also all-terrain, so they can walk up pretty much any obstacle that they need to. So is their intended purpose as anti-air? And they just happen to be good at both. No, I don't. I don't know if they can shoot at air. I don't. I don't really think that's. What oh, okay. Do. They shoot rockets. Okay. They don't. They're not really homing. Um, I got you. So. I got you. Um, and Talos. now he is transitioning into Talos. So Talos would be like the next step up from the Widows. The Widows are relatively early tech. Um, for T three, they'd kind of be the equivalent to like Panthers or Pyros oh, okay. on T two. Uh, just in terms of like, it's the usually the first thing you build when you get there. Um, so why why do they, I guess, transition through the whole T three thing like that? Why not just build like? Why not just go for like a what was the, whatever the rocket like spider a, thing that you mentioned earlier? Either arbitrator or like a juggernaut. Why, why not go for that um, right, right away? Well, I guess there's two things. Number one is the surprise factor. So if you if you have, like, say, a group of, wi of widows, and your opponents aren't expecting it. You can do a lot of damage because they don't they don't know you're on T three. Okay. Uh, where a juggernaut is really expensive, or arbitrator, and it takes a long time. So by the time you finish it, they may already be on T three. Okay. All right, hang on. It is going crazy, man. There's so much Ooh, happening. Yeah. Oh you can, yeah. You can see these widows just shoot out. I, the, that was insane. They just. Wreck those fighters. Yeah, massive volleys of 
missiles or uh, rockets, I guess. But yeah, I'm a little worried about the game sound. I don't want it to be too loud. I, I always struggle with this in my cast of like, you know, I, I, I want the stream to be or the the cast to be engaging, but I don't I don't want the sound to just um, you know deafen everybody. So yeah. Um. Yeah, these widows are pretty strong, and uh, you do you do want to micro them though. I'm not sure about him just walking them up Ooh. in melee range like that. They they do have a lot of health. For I mean, they are still T3, so they do have a lot of health, but uh, they they can die. I mean, they're not they're by no means invisible. Um, you need to bring those sumos forward. Yeah, for the, the sumos are much more suited to just tank enemy fire. But uh, now there's Morty's coming up as well, so... And this Talos is also arriving, so... Yeah, the southern team has been the aggressor for most of this game. They've really kept on the pressure, and I think that's paying off. I mean, they've, as you can see, the whole southern part of the Team 1's base is just kind of decimated at this point. They, they really don't have have much left down here. And they also have control of the plateaus, right? So... Yep. Seems like it's they're... looking like the Southern Team's game to lose. No, I mean, I, I agree <laughs> with you. Like, in fact, I mean, do you think the Northern Team can, can win at this point? What are... Okay, uh, what is all this? What are all these atlases? Are those road bombs? Or are they just... Well, that's a good is question. roach bombing a thing in Escalation? Is what? Roach bombing. Do you know what that is? I, I know what it is. I just, I've never seen it in Escalation. Um, I don't, he doesn't have roaches, I guess. He doesn't have roaches. That's a, that's a K bot. Oh no, he does have know. a K bot lab, but I don't see roaches. It's a really good question of what he's even doing with all his atlases, right? Shockwave. Oh, weird. Is anyone from the northern team on T3? Because if they, if none of them get T3, I don't know that they. I guess they do. So, so orange has T3, and dark green has it. Okay. But they haven't built any T3 like fighting then, units. Yeah, brown's working. If they don't get any like big boys out soon, then. I don't think that they have a chance. Yeah. They need to do. They need to do something. Oh, it's this is what I've seen of the Marauder. This is the arm equivalent to the to the Widow. It's just a. Uh, oh, okay. A little boxy. Yeah. It's boxy. Just a, you know the spider K-bot that, that shoots the, the rockets. Right. But you know, I have to give the Northern team credit. I mean, they are they are they holding off. Back. The, the tide, the endless uh, wave of, of crap that the uh, the southern team is sending at them, so they, they, they have to get props for that. Yeah, they definitely uh, they pushed it back a bit. Get the Talos at the front now. Yeah, the Talos will be a step up from the Widows. Um, but man, I, I almost never build Talos. I feel like they're too expensive, but I, I have seen people win games with them. Uh, Deoxide, I've seen Deoxide win games with these. Um, I mean, they're pre they're pretty well rounded. They're not really. I don't really think they're great at anything, but they're like just missile spam, right? Like their their fists spam missiles, and they have missiles coming off their shoulders. It's like missiles yeah. galore everywhere. And uh, they also hit air too, so I mean they're pretty. It's a, just a pretty well-rounded unit. I this is going to sound stupid, but I actually really like the way that the Talos wreck looks. <laughs> it's it's like the Iron Giant on the ground. Oh, I don't know if I've ever paid attention to that. I'll, when it dies, we'll have to. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, one dies, so you can see what I'm talking about. It looks really cool. It's a neat-looking wreck. So yeah, yellow coming in here with bombers. A little bit, but it was just a few bombers. It wasn't really like a EXE uh, level bombing run. So, yeah, it won't accomplish too much. At this point, 
at this point in the game you would really need a very dedicated um, kind of air armada to, to accomplish much I think uh, or, or T3 air T3 air is of course very strong but uh, it's also also expensive and I don't I don't know if I expect to see it this game but what I am interested in is why Dark Green built all of these atlases. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. Just um, circling them. What would he even want to put in them? I mean, he could put roaches. Um, I'm trying to think of. Can can any of the T3 units be flown on on an atlas? That's what I was thinking. Um, like, could that? What are they building right there? The Cerberus? Uh, oh, could the Cerberus. that be flown with an atlas? No way. Okay. <laughs> no. But I don't know. There are T3 units. So the arm has a T3 unit. I'm trying to remember what it, what it's called. It's like a... Uh... Oh, the bomb. Yeah, the arm might have a T3 bomb, or it's like a spider that sends out these radioactive shockwaves. Um... I don't know, that might be able to be picked up because the model is kind of small, but he's not even building it. So I don't know, like, we've got to keep an eye on that. We've got to figure out what he's playing. I'm talking about the Defiler and the Vermin. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe that? Like, maybe that could be... Now I want to see that. It would be pretty entertaining, for sure, I mean... Yeah, we'll, we'll keep our eye on it. So, so I got a question for you. Sure, go ahead. Um, so I played Escalation a few times recently, and I used to play, like I said. Uh, but obviously the updates have changed it quite a bit. But how how does the upgrade station actually work? Okay, so... I, the, yeah, go ahead. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. It, it doesn't do... I mean, it's not too complicated. Okay, uh, we're sending down a lot of... Scouts, but uh, I think that's it. I don't think he has anything. Now, Dark Green does have a lot of phoenixes, so uh, he might go for a bombing run. But uh, yeah, the Northern team really, that's really nice pushing push. back a little bit. Yeah, this this has just kind of been like one endless, like one endless battle. That's kind of what it feels like between both teams. Um, let's turn down the sound a little bit. So, um, but one thing I will say, uh, the upgrade center, the way that works is, uh, it upgrades your com okay. It's it acts as the advanced targeting or the, or the targeting facility, right? So it does that. Oh, okay, okay. It also upgrades your commander. It makes him into like a super commander. So he has more health and his D gun is better than one shotting everything? Yeah, so uh, he has one he has more health. I think his D gun gets like a longer range. Oh it's okay. kinda upgrades you know, the D gun probably does the same amount of damage, but it just Wow, see these these marauders this is this is nasty man. They're putting in some work. Red is just kind of getting collapsed on. His, his base is... is uh, crumbling here, and uh, he's, you know, he's building some rotters of his own, but... If you look in the, the little eco tab on the bottom left there, yeah. uh, red and yellow are definitely the weak links okay. when it comes to eco. Oh wow, yellow is at 70, metal that's, that's pretty low. Yes, and there's, is it is purple at 300 or 200? That's 300. 300, yeah, and then orange is at 400, so they're a little bit behind. <laughs> so, um, so purple working on a juggernaut. And, like juggernauts. Uh, yeah, juggernauts are just one of, one of my favorite units in Escalation, and it's one of the, uh, one of the strongest T3 units. The only problem is that it's so slow, it takes forever to get anywhere, but if you can either build them on the front line, or you might you might be able to pick those up maybe in a T2 transport, or maybe like a T3 transport. I don't know. 
a juggernaut. Oh, and a T3 transport. Yeah. Okay. I was like, that doesn't big model. Yeah, there are T3 uh, transports, so. Okay. Uh, there's but you'd also have, to have a T3 air lab for that, right? Yeah. There's also a galactic gate, so you can teleport it to the front line, I think. So that's an option. And in fact, there's, in this patch, you can build a galactic gate, and then there's air, T3 air units that will act as the other end of the gate. So you can f Oh. Yeah, you can that's fly. That's interesting. Yeah. So that would we might see a Telos die here soon. Yeah, I mean, uh, Orange is on the Fido Spider game plan, so... That's a lot. These Telos have a lot of health, but they're not... Obviously not invincible. They're... Really, in terms of health, they're not even, uh... Not even close to some of the upper end... Oh! Units? Oh, uh, so they blew it up too much. <laughs> deleted. Yeah. They're surrounded. But yeah, they are surrounded. So the northern team doing a good job of pushing back these attacks. And uh, to be honest, the southern team isn't working that well together. Like, purple has been kind of attacking, but no one's really helping him that much. I guess blue yeah. is sending some stuff. No, this corpse is just got deleted so fast. Darn, we didn't get to see it. Yeah. But just take my word for it, it looks like the Iron Giant, like laying down. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen that movie, but yeah, that was a really good, really good movie. Um, it's like a, it's like a kids movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't actually know what company made it, but yeah. But um. But yeah, so, so the upgrade center acts as a targeting facility. It upgrades your commander. And, um, and the final thing it does is there are you, the, each faction has one T3 vehicle that gets upgraded um, when you build the upgrade center. So for the core, it's the behemoth, and for the arm, it's the centurion. I think that's like okay. And I think I saw a behemoth earlier. Is that what that is? What? Is what what did you say? Right in the center of the screen. Oh, I think that I saw the behemoth. Uh, right on your screen just a second ago. Right there. This? It's, it's kind of hard to hear, hear you right now. Sorry, is that a behemoth? Right here? Yeah. No, it's no, a no, juggernaut. Yeah. Oh, that's a juggernaut. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> it's alright, no, don't worry about it, there was, I think that that's down there. Oh, you're, oh, you're talking about this, yeah, this is a behemoth. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure what you were talking about. So, like, the behemoth now has, has two barrels, and then when it's upgraded, it gets a third barrel. Oh, okay. No. Chase is still looking for damage. I'm guessing it's a little thing here. Is it even worth it to build them without getting the upgrade center? Yeah, it's still worth it to build them. The upgrade center just makes them a lot better. But right now we have a, a Phoenix uh, Phoenix squad coming in, but it's just not enough, man. There's just not enough Phoenixes there to really uh, win the game. So do uh, I know that in Escalation there's a lot more different kinds of like radars and shields and stuff do you see those get utilized a lot in games yeah you definitely um you definitely see the shields being used because um there's there's some uh especially t3 weapons uh like like t3 artillery weapons so that would it block the big bertha yeah like it, it blocks it blocks like the long range plasma cannons and stuff so, so you really need the shields to protect your base. Um, a bit like Forge Alliance. I don't know if you've ever played Forge Alliance, but I haven't. I've seen videos though. I've, I've yeah. watched them. In the uh, in the Forge Alliance series of games, <laughs> shields are pretty important just to protect your base. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, Pink has had this plateau for a while, but uh, Orange seems to be uh, overrunning it. We'll have to see. Yeah, here's that shield, the Aegis. Yeah. 
and it will it will block some of the damage. And to be honest, I'm not exactly how the shields even work. Like, obviously they, they block damage, but I don't know if they, they block a percentage or if they have like a hidden health bar. Um, or if they just drain your energy until you run out or what. I'm, I'm, I'm really not exactly sure how the shields operate. But, uh, it is surprisingly hard to kill. I mean, he's, he's focusing and it's, it's got a lot of health. You mentioned earlier when you go into these games, it's good to have a plan. Yeah. Uh, what, like, what would be an example of that? Like for you, if you were playing a big team game. So, um, obviously, you know, killing killing one player's commander, you know, you, you take out a fourth of their team, right? Right. So having like a having a, a dedicated air player that can just snipe people. Okay. Uh, with like a really because you know. You have obviously T2 air is good for sniping, but T3 air, you know, like Dark Green is finally going T3 air. Um, you can snipe a commander pretty easily at that point, right? Because you're like the, the power of the T3 air units is just unbelievable. Sure. Um, so that would be like a that would be like a, a strategy, you know, to just take out one or two players, to snipe them. Um, another thing. Uh, is like the long range plasma cannons or um, the tactical nukes so if you if you have a couple of players building a, just a, a ton of tactical nukes and I've I've seen um, I've seen games won with basically just tactical nukes um, you, do, you don't generally kill the enemy players with tactical nukes but you can just take out their defenses with them and then your whole team can push in they can just roll in yeah you just yeah. roll in so that's another really good one but you also have um, like buzz saws. You can you can build a bunch of buzz saw or dictator is like the T3 Bertha or the T3 long range plasma cannon. Yeah. So you can do that strategy. Uh, have one or two players build those and just uh, kind of shell your enemy's base from the other side of the map, and it's it's really hard to, to stop or deal with. Um, or you know just just the fucking the game plan of. Everyone goes T3, um, and all all pushes at the same time. You know, just really good, really good teamwork. Um, any combination of those things, just uh, it's it. You know, it's a bit of a different dynamic. It's yeah. like, for example, in Protea, you'd have to to finish a game. You know, you'd have to have a player going nukes, right, or, or like someone going Berthas, or s someone building so many bombers, like. You know, 200 T2 bombers and and just you no, know, not really. No, how, how do those no. games usually end? Uh, usually, well, it depends on the map. But like on a land map like this, uh, four and four, yeah. it would probably end with uh, just one person's not covering their side good enough, and uh, they lose a big enough eco that one you know like you snipe one commander like if the game goes long enough yeah you'll see nukes eventually or you'll see the long range artillery but for the most part uh and even the sniping with the uh the air so it's the same kind of stuff but uh most of the time it's just because one player makes a mistake and uh somebody else takes advantage of it and then his commander is gone but you also see a lot more commanders on the front lines in protea because it's a very powerful unit, and he can like control space, so it's a little risky. I see it a lot, anyways. But yeah, I don't, I don't see nukes as often as you'd think. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, you know, there's always anti nukes, so that's always a uh, yep. It's always a, a threat or a counter. Of course, you can you can bomb the anti nukes and um, or take them out some other way. But uh, yeah, that that is a little surprising to me, just because. Uh, you know, you do you do hit these stalemate situations like like even in this game it kind of feels like a stalemate. Um, both teams just have so much stuff um, and so many defenses that even with T3, uh, the units are struggling to break through, struggling to make uh, progress, and uh, these plateaus have basically just become no man's lands kind of 
because uh, there's just so much combat happening. Yeah. So, uh, I, I do find that interesting, right? Because Pro-TA basically ends at T2. Um, it does. Where, where Escalation goes to T4. So I, I find it interesting that... Uh, um, you know, that the games don't get stalemated, you know? Like that. Yeah, it it is it is kind of interesting because, li like I said, we played a bunch of like big 4v4, 5v5s yesterday, and the longest one was 45 minutes. Most okay, so it's... Um, 25, 30 minutes. 45 minutes for a big game like that's pretty short. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you're just saying generally the games are, are just decided more, more quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even just that there was like a huge disparity between players, per se. Uh, and a, a couple of games it probably was like that, but there were quite a few where the I would say that the teams were pretty even and still it's a 25 minute game. Just just it's just I think it's just the nature of the game. It's just because you only can get to T2, yeah. your resources might be a little more valuable. And so when you lose resources it hurts like a lot. <laughs> no, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen any like um, 4v4s cast for Protea because all the Protea games I've ever watched uh, like on YouTube are like 1v1 or 2v2s. Yeah. I've never seen a, a big Protea game, so I'd, I'd kind of be interested to see how that would play out. Because, I mean, even the Escalation games don't generally last this like Like, the reason we're casting this is because it's such a close game. I mean, generally, one side right. will just crush the other. Right. Um, but, you know, games that are this close or this back and forth are pretty rare. Because you do yeah, have to have been. both sides kind of equally good or equally bad in this case. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but like like I said earlier, yellow's definitely the weak link here. Yeah. Uh, they didn't they didn't really improve on their eco. They went T three, but they didn't really. Yeah. Utilize it that well. Yeah, when I was actually talking to um, Day Nine, as I, I was helping him uh, set up his his stream. Oh, here we go. Yellow's commander is about to die. I think. So uh, yellow's out of the game, and to be honest, that's probably good for the southern team because they can just take his, <laughs> <laughs> you know, his spot, his, his resources. It's just a waste of space. <laughs> no, really, you know, I'm sorry, Loli. You know, you know, uh, keep your your underage anime addiction out of here. No, no, no. But seriously, I, I do think, you know, Smurf would probably be better off just taking his his metal spots there and. Uh, this is actually um, this is actually a pretty interesting discussion in the in the Forged Alliance community. So there's um, have you heard of FAF? You've probably heard of FAF. Right? Yeah, yeah. So FAF is more or less the client that it's it's the, uh, so TAF was based on FAF. It was, right. It's based on the same architecture, but um, in FAF in these big team games, there's always a big debate because there's two ways essentially that the team games can be played. One is called no, it's called no share, and that's where it's just like TA. When a commander dies, um, or when an ACU dies, that player just loses everything, everything they owned. Um, but the other, the other mode is called full share, and that's when when a player's commander dies, all of his stuff is gifted to the to the top player on their team, right? Okay. Well, you can immediately see the problem with that because basically, you're getting rid of a crappy player usually and just giving all the stuff to the best player, and right. so it's like, how is that a punishment exactly? You're you're benefiting the other team by killing their commander. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know that I'd really like that. I, I don't like it, right? But there's a big debate because a lot of people like it because like otherwise, what happens is you know you just lose just like in this game. You know, when you lose a player, it's devastating, but a lot of people like to play full share because you know the game isn't just over when one player dies, but like it's so frustrating because you feel like you're. Oh my. Okay, so dark green here having a uh, upgraded commander and using him like very aggressively. Let's see. He's at about half health. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. This is an upgraded commander. He becomes a mini Krogoth. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, I don't know what he's doing, man. This is about to die. Really risky. He's totally gonna die. Yeah, it's, it's like trolling. 
Oh, was it a decoy? It may have been a decoy, actually. So it upgrades your decoys? Too. Yeah, it does. Okay. Interesting. But, um... But I will say, you know, Purple doing a good job here of... You know, holding back the tide. Yeah, not letting him get that right flank. Yeah. I mean, he does have... Massive amount of, of T3. Um, Krogoths and some uh, some mammoths and, and juggernauts. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Southern team at once we at one point in the game we thought was was way ahead, but uh, oh, yeah. Yellow just a super weak link there, and uh, now the Northern team seems to be ahead. Oh my goodness. What is Dark Green doing, man? He's got he's what, building. What's he uh, building in those shooters? Zippers, zippers and shooters. All right. So zipper is like a raiding K bot. They, they're just really yeah. fast and really fast. Actually, they got uh, at least in Protea, they've got pretty decent DPS. So I yeah. would think that they're probably not too different here. Yeah, they they have good two DPS. But they're just glass cannons. I mean, they if yeah. you breathe on them, they die. But they're <laughs> You know, they're really good for raiding. You can get a couple behind the base then yeah. where they don't put all their defense. Exactly. And and that seems like what orange and dark green are trying to do is kind of get past purple's unbreakable line of, of experimentals here, but um, Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Because if they can if they can take out these vaults uh, th these vaults are unbelievably expensive, and they ha they do explode in a, in a wide AOE as well. And uh, the antimatter antimatter reactors as well are extremely volatile. So, if they could get this stuff, and it's hard to it's hard to believe that purple will be able to stop them at this point with just one mammoth. Um, and a doomsday machine. Yeah, and a, and a doomsday machine. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well, there's just commander too. <laughs> His commander's, oh, yeah, his right, commander's like running close. off. So yeah, once this vault goes, I think it's going to be a big, big explosion. Oh Ooh, yeah, as you can whoa, see. Whoa, that was a big explosion. Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't get to you see. You said the, big explosion. I did not think it was going to be that. Yeah, big. <laughs> we didn't get to see the animation, but but yeah, you can see that it took out most of the base there. And yeah. Wow. Yeah, these antimatter reactors are even bigger. So if if he takes these out, like. Purple's gonna lose his whole base. It's a good thing his commander walked away before that went off. Yeah, where where is his commander? He may have cloaked it. I don't see anymore? Oh no, it's up here. But uh, will he get the antimatter reactor? I mean, they they have a lot of health. He looks like he's oh he's not repairing it. He's like he's trying to build the upgrade. Yeah, there's an upgrade too. Ooh. He might live. Uh. Oh my oh, god, dude. He only needed like two more Fido shots. Or this Maverick could have just stayed. Oh, the Maverick walked away. Oh, here we go. Here, Okay, we got we to gotta turn this down. So this is probably my favorite unit in the entire Escalation. It's it's Aurora. It's a T3 bomber. And it's basically just like an upgraded Phoenix. It's like a Phoenix that drops nukes with each... Oh, okay. With, uh, with, All right. with, with each bomb. So you can see each of these is like a little nuke. Wow. And uh, this is absolutely going to take these out. Like, each of these little uh, droplets. And uh, oh. yeah, the explosions aren't rendering. Okay, there we go. But yeah. Pretty epic. I love this thing. This thing is just... It's probably really expensive. It is. It's unbelievably expensive, but it, it just... It just drops nukes. Here we go. I love it, man. I love it. and look at it. Look at his his bombing micro. Very well done. Yeah. He's just he's just doing lines of. Uh, he's done this before. Yeah, lines of nukes. Basically, uh, and they have a lot of health too, man. Like, they can survive long enough to. Uh, oh my God! Is he gonna take all these out too? There, That's all that hard, goes, dude. That was hard loss. so sick. That was so sick, man. One Aurora did all of that. This whole, 
Like, and at this point, man, like, the Southern team, do you think they have any chance at all to, uh, to come back in the game? No. Uh, yeah. none of them are on tier four. Because, yeah, like, even one tier four unit could probably do a lot of work. And it looks like they're sending nukes down to us on X on the map or something. That was a, that was a tactical uh, move. Oh, yeah. tactical move. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but no, at this point, purple's all energy's totally decimated and the yellow's gone. So I, I don't see, I don't see I'm coming back. But maybe they'll get lucky. We'll see. It's been pretty back and forth. Yeah, maybe one, maybe one of them, their internet will, you know, will crash. You know, yeah. Comcast has been pretty shitty lately, so. <laughs> but, you know, let's just pray that, uh, you know, the gods make this game even. But uh, Pink does have a Raptor, and Raptors are kind of the, uh, the arm equivalent of the Krogoth. So, uh. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Really strong unit. It's really powerful. And uh, can also take out groups as well doesn't want to get surrounded. He really wants to micro it away if he can, but it's just so many Fidos. But these spiders won't do anything. The raptors are pretty much immune to paralysis. But it's just so much. So much stuff, man. I don't I don't think it's gonna survive. It may though, man, it's 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 really doing a, a valiant valiant job here. And uh, shockwave with some more decoy commanders, I think. Yeah, you hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope, yeah, otherwise he's <laughs> being very reckless. Man. It, it's funny to me that you mentioned that uh, people are complaining about, or that there's a debate about the Fidos, uh, yeah. because I, I remember, I want to say like eight months to a year ago, it, it was that way, but everybody was complaining about Mavericks. Yeah, there's always one unit, or, or there's usually more, but there's always one major unit that everyone's, oh, it's so OP, it's so OP. And I don't know if Mavericks actually have gotten nerfed because of that. They did. They got okay. nerfed pretty hard, actually. Like you don't. See and the them sumos did as well. What? Sumo. Sumos got nerfed as well before that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you're right. Uh, at some point, the Fidos may change. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if enough people cry about it, <laughs> you know, there's a there's, there's a power in uh, you know. Activism or, or mass mining, as I would call it. <laughs> what, what did you say? Uh, the mob. Yeah, the mob. Yeah, the mob. <laughs> the mob power. You know, how do you? Uh, how do you say no to the mob? It's, you know, they're gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. So, um, yeah, you know, put enough pressure on Wotan, cry enough in the Discord, and, and perhaps, <laughs> you, you, you know, he will eventually relent. And he will get what you want and then six months later everyone will say it was over nerfed and why why did you know but, yeah uh, yeah you, you can't make them happy no no you absolutely yeah. you can never make them all happy <laughs> that would be counterproductive see because once they know that they have power over you yeah then they're gonna, they're i gonna mean the mob has it. mission creep by definition they always have to have something right so yep. even if everything was perfect they'd have to have to create a problem is too perfect. Yeah. So, um, you know, purple really has basically it looks like an, an unstoppable army. Oh, hold that thought. Dark green coming down here with a massive number of brawlers. Does he know where and, the commander uh, is? Is he going to get bully here? He is targeting oh, bully. Slow no. down. God, that's so many. Now, bully does have an upgraded commander, so it's, it's got a little more health than, than normal. And uh, I'm assuming there's probably flak. I don't see I, it. But I see them popping like flies. They they are dropping. I don't think he's gonna get him yet. Yeah. Good attempt though. He probably will get him into the red, but but he does. Amazingly, bully does live. But you just have to wonder if if they're delaying the inevitable here because uh, dark green building another aurora. He still has this line of atlases, which are essentially, I think, emotional support. I, I don't think they're... But, I, I I don't know, man. I feel like Purple... <laughs> I feel like Purple has this unstoppable army, like, but he just can't use it, you know what I'm saying? Because as soon as they leave... Yeah, <laughs> they'll lose. 
then they'll, they're just gonna move in and kill him. Oh, here's another Aurora. Okay, let's see what this is. He's targeting labs now. Will it one shot a lab? Oh, yeah. Oh, it'll land on the lab. <laughs> if he controls it right, yeah, that was <laughs> That was a goof. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they took out the upgrade center, so that's why Blue's commander is normal again. Blue tiny. Yeah, just, uh. It's like Super Mario versus just regular Mario. Yeah. Uh, did it, did it, did it, did it? Yeah. But. Took a Koopa shell. But. I know. Again, I mean, the, the Southern team doing a valiant effort here of uh, defending, but and, and these Raptors really worth their weight in gold. This this Raptor in particular, it's got to have like 10 billion kills. 192. This one's got 60. So these things have just been killing Phytos left and right, but you get the impression that there's just too much, you know. Mm -hmm. There's just not enough uh, raptors in the world. And, uh, yeah, Bully leaves. I think these heavy fusion reactors probably next. And uh, I don't know what happened there. I wasn't, I wasn't watching. It might have been a commander. It was a big... I don't think it was a commander. No. I don't know what that was. They're shooting at something. They're shooting at absolutely nothing on that hill. Is there something that we don't know? Like, like an invisible unit? Yeah, I don't know. No. But they, even the spiders are shooting. Oh, here we go. No, this is a nuke. That's an actual nuke for sure. Oh, wow. Okay, so somebody has a nuke up there. We haven't really been checking the, the player bases too much because at this point it's a little irrelevant. Um, yeah, the, the southern team in a lot of trouble. But, uh, you know, as you can see, these shields are pretty strong. But they do, they do re require power, so once the player runs out of power, I think the shield will go down, but... Um, oh, they did lose another commander, right? Because there's, I only see two colors. Yeah, uh, blue, blue left the game. Oh, he just quit? Yeah, I think he just quit. Okay, is that, is that... So usually after they've lost two players at this point, what, what's stopping them from throwing in the towel? Just, oh, nothing. Like, I think they're just playing for fun. They just want to... They want them to <laughs> to kill him. Yeah, they, they just want to play it out. I mean, dude, like, Purple you. has this army that is really it's strong. Right. He just can't use it. You know, like, he can't. It's not mobile enough. Yeah, it's so slow. And he's trying to defend his base, and he's not even able to do that. I think if I was Purple, I would have just sent my army up there just, just to see how far it would get, you know, because he's never going to defend his base from all this stuff. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, this has been a pretty entertaining game. Like, I will say, um, escalation in the late, you know, in the late game is pretty crazy. I mean, it just gets kind of outrageous. It's a lot. Of, yeah, it's a lot. As you can see. But, yeah, once this fusion reactor goes down, it's oh. going to take out everything. And then the, uh, the southern team at this point, I'm, I'm assuming they're, uh, they're just dead. So... That's that's interesting. The the giant explosions like that because that that makes your resources almost like a liability to build near anything. Yeah. No, and it's it's really interesting too because in escalation you get these adjacency bonuses. So if you like build multiple fusions connected to each other, then they produce even more energy. But, but the downside of that up. is that obviously yeah. if one goes, they all go. So that's pretty funny. It's like it's kind of a you know what I'm saying? It's like a risk reward. Type. Yeah, it's a little counterproductive, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to decide how, how worth it is to you to uh, take the risk. Because, as evidenced, one tier three bomber can take out like 10,000 metal, I mean, not metal, energy's worth of, you know. Right. Yeah, the tier three bombers are pretty crazy. And, uh,. Is there a T3 gunship? Yeah, there, there's T3 gunships. Of, of varying uh, size and power. So I wonder why you wouldn't try to go in that direction. and Because that, that's more of a mobile force that could probably do decent damage. Yeah, you could you could do that. I mean, they're, bo they're both pretty good. 
Of course, the T3, this whiplash, which is the T3 air defense, uh, is absolutely crazy. I mean, like, the DPS of this and the range of it is just unbelievable. I wish I could... I would click on it and show you, but I think it's about to die, but... If you go to Mega Map... Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, see if you could see it. It's it's it dead though. But yeah, like like I was saying when I was when I was showing day nine, the construction aircraft. He's like, wait, it's a flying constructor. I'm like, yeah. It's like it flies because you know like there's yeah. nothing like that in like Starcraft, right? Like all your workers yeah. are just. Oh, here's another Aurora. Yeah, the closest thing to that in Starcraft would probably be the uh, the Protoss. Like whatever that flying thing is, where you can warp them in. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about the. Um, it's like a flying warp gate. Um, yeah, you can like put that near your opponents and like warp in units right yeah. next to them, which that's like probably the closest thing. Yeah, I was, I I was trying to explain to him like the D gun, and but the, like, what do you compare that to in StarCraft? Like, oh yeah, here's this weapon that just kills anything in one hit. Okay, yeah. The oh, wow. The Aurora off. just one-shots a commander. <laughs> yeah. Just. Why don't everybody build these? <laughs> uh, I mean, they're, they're powerful, man, but you can you can kill them pretty fast, too, if you have a, you know, a lot of hawks or whatever. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, that was a really crazy game. It was really entertaining. I was I was expecting something to be done with these atlases, but, uh, you yeah, know, Dark Green sure. just trolling the casters, I think, with that. And... Uh, <laughs> Was he the one that recommended this game to Shockwave? Um, who who did uh, recommend this game to me? I I can't remember actually who. Uh, let me let me uh, check my Discord and see. Oh my, now my now my screen's bugging out. Anyway, I um the person that recommended this game to me was um, Stagma. Oh okay. Yeah, right. so I don't even know if he was in this game. He might have been in the game, but I didn't. I didn't probably see Smurf. It. Smurf name. Yeah, Smurf. He it was one of the Smurfs. He was probably dark green because that's the um, that's the color he usually chooses. So I'm assuming dark green was the. <laughs> Builds a bunch of atlases to troll yeah, wing flyer. <laughs> he was just trying to troll us in the, with his build order. But anyway, man, yeah, that's. That, that was pretty entertaining, I will say. It was pretty back and forth. Um, at some point, it did look like the Southern team was going to win or that they had a big advantage. But, um, yeah, man, Yellow was, was really the weak link, man. He just, just wasn't – his economy was just kind of underwhelming. What do you think? Yeah, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't building the T3 resources that everybody else had. So he was down like 200 metal <laughs> compared to everybody else. Which really resources is the name of the game in Total Annihilation. Yeah, it's a very very macro uh, type RTS. You definitely have to keep your your resources up and you know keep your economy going. But uh, yeah, man, I, I appreciate you coming to cast with me. And um, guys, I will put uh, I will put his channel in the uh, in the description. And um, go check it out. He mostly casts Pro TA, but uh, there are some awesome Pro TA games as well. I've casted Pro TA on my channel in the past, so uh, go, go uh, check out Krogarth. And um, we'll probably do some more casts in the future. Maybe next time we can do a, a Pro TA game um, and put it on your channel or whatever. That'd yeah, be that pretty could cool. be fun. But uh, yeah, man, um, I'm looking forward to that. If you have any good. Um, 4v4 pro TA games. I'd love to see, you know, what, what, how that pans out. So, yeah, I'll see, I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can uh, find a good one to showcase. But yeah, thanks for having me on the channel. It was a lot of fun. All right, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll probably be casting a bar game next. But uh, until, until the, uh, the next cast, thank you for watching and uh, see you later.